Hi, welcome to Terry Beckert's GovCon podcast, where we discuss current government contracting trends, compliance matters, and best practices to guide federal contractors forward. I'm Susan Moser. I'm the partner uh, in charge of our government contracts practice today. And joining me today is one of our newer members of our government contract services group, Roy Rushing. Uh, Roy has an interesting background, so I'd like for to ask him first to introduce himself and share a little bit about his background, and then we will get into today's topic, which is business systems applicability. So thanks for joining me, Roy. Thank you, Susan, for inviting me today. I'm very excited to be here to discuss business systems. Uh, to uh, introduce myself and tell you a little bit about my background, about 25 years ago, I started my journey when I joined the United States Coast Guard, which led me into becoming a contracting officer early in my career. After two tours on active duty supporting many operational and support missions, I decided it was time to explore a civilian career in government. Uh, it has been quite an experience. Over the last two decades, serving as a contracting officer with various agencies such as the United States Coast Guard, General Services Administration, Department of Defense, working major systems, procuring ships, aircraft, weapon systems, supporting programs with contracting professional services, and my favorite role, where I served as a construction contracting officer, providing much needed facilities and infrastructure to support the warfighter and the fleet. It's been a true adventure. After I left federal service and before coming to Cherry Becker, I served as a contract administrator and business development specialist for an 8A small business. So I gained a lot of experience of what it takes to be successful, both in the private sector and small business emerging in the marketplace. Great. Uh, so Roy does have a great background and is really a great um, addition to our team. He's been helping a number of contract clients with contract management and dealing with the uh, very various compliance issues that go along with the government as your customer. Um, and so having that background um, and perspective working with both uh, the government and with uh, with contractors um, has really adds a lot of value. Um, so today's topic is on business systems applicability. And we thought that we would start out first by providing some background. Um, so I did wanna say this is the first in a new series on business systems. Um, subsequent podcasts will cover more information on each of the six business systems. Um, but I'm going to start uh, today is a little bit a uh, broad overview. So I'm going to ask Roy to start by just giving a quick overview of what the business systems are uh, and a little background. Well, uh, Susan, the business systems were put in place in the FAR in 2012. Uh, they consist of six, uh, six separate contractor business systems, which are subject to determination of adequacy per the terms and conditions described in applicable business system clauses that you might find in your contract. Per these rules, the Department of Defense will conduct audits and review the adequacy of these systems. And these rules only apply to cost accounting standards and covered contracts. But mostly, DOD considers the business systems the first line of defense against waste, fraud, and abuse. Great. So in your experience, um, when should contractors be worried about these business systems? Um, and which business systems come typically come into play first for contractors? Well, Susan, uh, contractors should take business systems seriously because the acceptance of a business system determines the level of success a contractor may experience with seeking out, obtaining larger contracts and future work with the government. Contractors should generally experience business, uh, business systems typically when there is growth beyond the small business exemption, uh, when awarded a covered contract subject to CAS um, or proposing on a particular RFP that has constraints from the contracting officer of the agency, or simply across the dollar threshold, which is dependent on having a business system or improved system by the government or DOD. Some of these systems that you'll see like most prevalently is the first three, which is going to be accounting, estimating, and purchasing. Those are the most uh, common. Now, 
some of these systems are not exactly for everybody. So when you're talking about small businesses, generally you'll find that small businesses are exempt from cost accounting system or or the applicability of these clauses. Um, the most prevalent one, I, and I think the most in-depth in depth review that you'll see is the accounting, which contains 18 separate criteria uh, elements that will be audited. Um, some of these things include some of the sound that the contractor possesses sound internal controls on their environment, their accounting framework, organizational structure, proper segregation of direct or indirect costs, identification of direct costs by contract, logical and consistent method of accumulation and allocation of indirect costs and, and final cost objectives. Timekeeping systems are going to take a look at that, identify if the police labor um, is accurate and recorded properly. Uh, labor distribution um, for charges of direct or indirect labor to appropriate cost objectives and identification of costs to the actual contract line item or CLIN as, as some of us know it. Um, and then you're going to see estimating and estimating is just a, a system in a nutshell that basically says the contractor has a system in place that has budgeting and planning controls to generate costs submitted in their proposals that, that will be fairly well fair and reasonable to the government. Um, it goes over some of the uh, organizational structure, established lines of authority and responsibilities, internal controls, management reviews, flow work, coordination and communication. And the last of the three most common ones are the purchasing system in which the government reviews the contractors purchasing proper procedures and processes to ensure that there's proper oversight of purchasing, management supervision, a consistent practice, and is the government getting a fair and reasonable price on the subcontracts that are being awarded, and then effective supply chain management. Great. So as you mentioned, um, small businesses are exempt from this. And in a couple of minutes, we'll, we'll touch on why we're, we are seeing some of these uh, systems being put in place by, by small businesses. Um, uh, and as you said, the accounting, estimating and purchasing are the most common. And, and generally, your, your estimating is going to be putting a system in place that is consistent with your accounting system. So all of these, all of these different system there there is interaction between all of them um, one thing i will just mention um, a lot of small businesses are used to are familiar with a pre-award accounting system survey and, and that is a prospective um, assessment of your accounting system to see if it is adequate for certain flexibly choice type contracts i.e um, cost type contracts and just to um, contrast a little bit, a pre-award accounting system is really just, you have to see that the, the, the design of the system is in place, it doesn't have to be operational. When we're talking about the, the DFARS accounting system, um, that is a much more comprehensive um, accounting systems assessment. A lot of the same attributes, but what they're also looking at is a system in, in place. Um, so Roy, you, you, you mentioned, so there are six business systems, so you talked about the, the first three that are the most common, uh, but what are the other three? So you'll find that there are three other systems that are covered, and I believe these are covered by uh, DCMA. Um, and it's property, earned value management system, and material management, um, MMAS. Uh, You'll mostly find these contracts under cost reimbursement or when covered by CAS or when an agency or a contract officer deems it necessary to be in the contract or you trip a simple threshold. Um, the property one is mostly seen in contracts when the government has government furnished equipment or government furnished property in which the contractor has control and is liable for said uh, property or equipment that has on their facility that they're responsible for for a specific contract objective. Uh, material management, um, that you'll see more like in a contract where uh, someone's awarded a production contract. That's the, like the best example I can think of where you're 
buying material to produce an end product. You know, uh, everybody like my old teachers used to like to say widgets. You know, you got to have material to make the widget. So, you know, steel or aluminum or something to that effect. And then earned value management, that's, that's a funny system because this is a system in which the government is just saying, we want you to have a system that complies with the guidelines found in ANSI uh, EIA 748. And it's basically just saying that you have the proper cost controls to uh, ensure through modifications or performance in the contract um, that the pricing and the costs that you're uh, turning over the subcontractor costs are consistent and fair and reasonable to the government um, and, and through that improved system. Yep, and I know we uh, we we deal with all six systems and help companies uh, you know, develop them, put them in place, or assess them. Uh, but definitely, uh, EVMS and MMAS are probably the the least um, common. We certainly deal with them quite often in manufacturing, shipbuilding, um, uh, things like that. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, that we are certainly seeing, and, and many contractors seeing, is that in a lot of these um, IDIQ vehicles, uh, opportunities, RFPs, uh, a lot of them, they are evaluating uh, contractors' response uh, on a points basis. And often they are awarding points to contractors for having some of these systems in, in place. Um, we're also seeing it in small business uh, set-asides, and which is a little bit uh, of a conflict because uh, as you mentioned earlier, small businesses are exempt from from these requirements. Um, but you know there are some benefits. Um, these are processes to you know when you have them incorporated into a contract, it's it's sort of forcing you to comply. But but there are some good benef uh, business practices on that. So, uh, Roy, just you know, what are your thoughts on seeing these IDIQ vehicles for small businesses where they where they put these uh, points where you can award points if you have these types of systems in place. Well, Susan, generally speaking, as we covered before, small businesses are not expected by federal agencies to have the capability to manage an estimating system, purchase a system, or, nor are they subject to CAS. The smallest firms would not have contracts or subcontracts with significant costs or pricing data or significant size subcontractor efforts to warrant such a system. However, as you said, we're seeing more and more in contracts where the government wants to have the assurances that the contractor has systems for costs, uh, materials, and, and other elements that will lower risk um, in the performance of the contract. So if you're a small government contractor with plans to be awarded larger contracts, such as multiple award contracts or cost plus contracts, to grow their business uh, should be should begin working now with a consulting firm or accounting firm such as Cherry Beckert um, that specializes in government contract to be competitive in acquisitions in the future. Like we said, we're giving extra credit, and if you don't have these systems and your competitor does, you know they're going to get a higher rating on their evaluation score than you are and potentially win that contract. So it behooves a contractor that wants this specialized kind of work or wants a contract of that value to go after these systems and get an approved system in place or uh, at least start the process because it's uh, you can't do these systems overnight. It's something that needs to be planned for uh, it to be compliant with uh, DCAA's requirements and uh, DCMA's requirements. Yep, yep. No, I think that's uh, good, good advice. And you know, we're, we're talking about the DOD DFARS requirements. So this is, uh, these business systems rules are incorporated in um, the, the DFARS. So obviously specifically applicable to, to DOD, uh, but you know, DOD typically does set the standard for for other agencies to, to follow or incorporate similar requirements. So. Uh, while we're focusing on DO, the DOD business systems, there are other agencies. Um, for example, uh, Department of Energy has uh, purchasing uh, system requirements. Again, similar but a little little bit different. Um, but generally, you know, if a company follows the the DOD DFARS rules for business systems, um, that's certainly going to be uh, more than adequate for for any other 
for any other agency. Um, the, um, the business systems, um, again, in our future podcast, we are going to delve into, uh, not in great detail because our podcasts are meant to be uh, fairly short, about 15 minutes, um, but we will be having a whole series um, that will delve into uh, detail, more detailed information on each um, on each of the six business systems. Um, uh, DCA does have oversight over the accounting, estimating, and MMAS, and uh, DCMA has oversight over purchasing, EVMS, and property. Um, they do have teams that do evaluate those. Um, and so that's typically who you would be dealing with. Um, so for that, we will uh, we will wrap up, but um, we definitely would encourage everyone to look for um, uh, listening to our future uh, business system podcast series. Um, in addition, just please be sure to check out our website for lots more information on podcast articles and webinars. Um, and in addition, please don't hesitate to reach out to us directly, uh, Susan Moser or Roy, um, if we can help you with our uh, particular system. Our contact information is uh, on the website and uh, hopefully this found this uh, overview helpful and will join us for future um, sessions.